What is going on, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, cats and dogs? We are back. You are listening to another episode of the one, the only, the Hardcore Geek Podcast. And uh, as always, I am your host, Ryan, a.k.a. Mr. Showtime. I am here in the uh, studio, the upstairs, the random room of the house that just happens to have a microphone. I'm here with Michelle. What's going on? Nothing. That's... That's the intro I get now. I, uh, Have I been gone that long? We'll, we'll, okay, we'll we'll come back to it. I mean that's fine. I I get it. Oh I man, it. saltiness. Okay, here, hold on. <laughs> let me try this again. Okay, she's the uh, host. So nice. We nicknamed her twice. She's calling from the other side of the kitchen. <laughs> she is the cupcake bandit. Uh, I don't know the other. What what are your other nicknames? I mean, you made up so many. We made up so many. Um, she will, she will stab a bitch if she has to. Mm-hmm. She is Michelle! That is so much better. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. You, I feel the love. There you go. And, 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 on the phone, on the bat phone, we got the one and only Mr. Joe Dub. What's going on, man? I feel like Marl is so much better. And it's kind of biased. That that kind of sucks because you had to do Michelle's like twice. She had to let you know, but you was like, "Well, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna do Joe Doug good because I don't want him to come through the phone or drive, you know, up here and beat me up." So I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I'm a princess, so she's petty like that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> but I did give you. Okay, let me try this one more time. Let me give you some sweet, some sweet uh, sound effects here. He's calling in from the bathroom, from the heart of Gotham City, one, the one and only, Joe Dub. So do I talk like Batman or something like that? Like, is that how I'm supposed to do it, or? <laughs> you, you need to talk with the, uh, with the, uh, the Christian Bale, um, like, he's got laryngitis voice all night. Do you remember, I remember... I don't know, I think you and I went to a wrestling match, and I've never seen you laugh so hard in my life. You know what I'm talking about, right? I hated you for weeks. <laughs> I hated you for weeks. Michelle, Michelle did, did, did we ever tell you that story? I don't think so. This guy, we go to a wrestling show. It was actually NXT's first wrestling show in Cleveland. It was, yeah. At the door. And we get back in the car... He calls his lovely wife to let her know he's on his way home. Okay. He gets the voicemail. He literally starts talking like Batman to her <laughs> voicemail. And he's doing it in the most serious face ever. I'm in the passenger side <laughs> screaming like I'm actually... I thought I was going to see heaven that night because I'm <laughs> laughing like, so we're, hard. We're stuck and in I traffic. laughed so hard. He was laughing so hard. Like, I thought he was going to have an asthma attack or something. Because <laughs> and good. the whole way home, I'm just laughing. Because, <laughs> okay, because he, he does it so perfect. Like, no, no. You, Mr. Showtime, I need you. Do it to, now. You, to oh do your God. Batman voice for everybody so now. they can do see what I'm talking about. Do it. Oh, my God. Do I don't know if it, so you put me on the spot, and we're live. Do we're it. live right here on Spreaker.com. Um, so everybody can uh, tune in and hear me be an asshole. Do it. So we're talking about Bale. Like, like, plug. I don't know what it was. It was something like uh, I called her up, and I'm like, uh, oh, God, I haven't done this in a while. Um, <laughs> okay, hold on. The anticipation's killing me. All right, let me. <laughs> okay, let me let me add the the lightning sound effects. Okay. So I call the wife and I'm like, "We're in the car and we're stuck in traffic, <laughs> but I just want you to know that we're probably gonna get Taco Bell on the way home." <laughs> so something like that. And something like that, and. <laughs> And now, and now I'm not going to be able to talk for the rest of my days. That was fantastic. I love so, it. And my wife's probably, she's not serious. I'm she, crying. She probably hear me. I'm crying. I don't know how that resonated with uh, with everybody who's listening right now, but uh, 
we'll find out. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. All right. So, hey, um, before we move into anything, I do want to thank everybody for listening right here uh, on the Stolen Show Network. We are at www.hardcoregeekcast.com. Right now we're live on Spreaker.com slash show slash uh, hardcore geek. It's really hard to say slash show, you know. Slash show. So, slash I, show yeah, slash show, it's really hard. Show. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. That's, a tongue, that's a tongue twister, right it there. It really is. I sound like an idiot every week. Um, if you guys want to join the conversation? Hit the chat up. Um, we're really bad at that, so uh, um, so you might just be talking to yourself. But who cares? But um, <laughs> or not? Not who cares? But uh, hit us up on Twitter at uh, at HC Geekcast or on the Facebook or on the Instagram. We're on the YouTube. We're on everything, guys. So uh, uh, if you want to check out past episodes, too, go to iTunes or anywhere you want to find your favorite uh, favorite uh, podcasts. Just type in Hardcore Geek, and we are there. Guys. Yeah. Guys. Okay. Before we get into our main topic, uh, we're about a half a week removed from Super Bowl 51. It's not really a, a geeky thing. You know, it's not really like a, you know... Yeah, you know, I guess you could be a sports geek, but I'm I'm assuming we all watched, and we saw like the uh, this. I watched half. Dude, so you didn't see the comeback. I didn't see the comeback. I'm jo- pissed. Joe, I know you watched. Yeah, I was I was blown away. That that just doesn't happen unless you're Brady. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I People know. can hate all they want. Like they can hate all they want, but I mean and. I'm not one of those, I'm a Patriots fan to a certain extent. Like, you know, I respect what they do. You know, they're, they're a well-oiled machine, so I understand it. Am I a big fan? Oh, you know, did I want them to lose? Of course. Uh-huh. Falcons, same situation as Cleveland. Well, I take it back. Atlanta as a, as a city, same situation as Cleveland. In their hundred some plus years, they've only had one title, one title, wow, wrestling, um, one championship, and that's the Atlanta Braves in 95. So I was rooting for them. I'm like, you know, nobody pictured the Falcons getting past Green Bay or Dallas not being in it. So, you know, I'm rooting for the underdog, and they destroyed in the first half. I mean, come on. I'm sure anybody else would have thought if they fell asleep at halftime, they oh Falcons got it, you know, and then they wake up and see New England and they're like, "How?" <laughs> Dude, I straight up was getting ready to go to bed at like the middle of the third quarter, and I'm like, "Ah, eh, we'll see what happens." And I'm like, I I'm sitting there and I'm like, "This isn't happening right now." I'm like, "This is insanity." What's happening? And uh yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, regardless of who you're rooting for, um, it was definitely a sight to be seen. You know, it was definitely something. Um, so we, I mean, it's history. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So many records was broke. You know, with that. I mean, it's the first overtime. How do you have the? How was that the first overtime in fifty-one Super Bowl? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. That was pretty nuts. So we had that. We had the game. We had the infamous uh, Lady Gaga performance. What did you think of that? I thought it was good for what it was. Um, I'm glad she performed. I'm glad she did like a greatest hits type thing. I'm not a big fan of her newer music, even though I guess this is what she kind of always wanted to do. But the earlier stuff was for her to get, you know, get recognized and everything. So I, I thought she did a, a hell of a show. It just, you know... I'm still very biased to, like, you know, Prince 10 years ago who made yes. it Purple Rain on everybody. You know, I wanted to be a part of that Purple Rain. No, I hear <laughs> that you, was man. epic. <laughs> I didn't want to watch the football, put any more football after that. I'm like, can Prince just come back out and just, you know, do our uncle? Really? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what about what about y'all? Did you see the uh, halftime show? Yes, Lady Gaga is my queen. And there it is. My queen. Yeah, I mean, I like, love period. Her. What's up? Yeah, the the wife loves her too. She uh, she went to her most recent concert and uh, said that that was by far one of the best concerts ever, next to like her in sync and Justin Timberlake one. So I've never seen her in concert, like, yeah, she, but I would love to. Yeah, you might you might want to do that because apparently she does a very phenomenal job. I, 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 I you know. 
I just, I love her, and I love what she stands for, and it's just, I thought it was really good. I thought there was just enough, like, political jabs that they were subtle, but it wasn't overwhelming. I thought she did a really, really, really good job. Yeah, they made, like, a weird, like, I I, I guess there was, like, a, like, all this hype, like, it was going to be, like, this real politically driven thing. Like, they really thought, yeah, they really thought that she was going to do something political because she was so for Hillary. Um, I was really hoping that, like, she did, like, her little song at the top of the stadium and then she starts being lowered down, like, Sting from the rafters and then she just looks in the camera and she's like, suck my dick, Trump. And then that, that's the whole that's the whole thing. That would have been awesome. And then they're like, thank you for viewing the Pepsi halftime show. And she's still coming down just telling Trump to suck her dick. So. <laughs> they just pick on random commercials and I'm like we already seen that nope they gotta cut it <laughs> yeah right <laughs> uh, we we actually found out that her jump at the beginning of the uh, her performance mm-hmm. was pre-recorded that wasn't even live it, okay that's what I thought okay. I didn't think it was because at the beginning of the game they said that they were closing that they were keeping the dome closed because there was a chance of rain so I was really confused I'm like I thought the dome was closed but those drones yeah, are awesome. That, that, that definitely uh, went over my head, but because I'm just watching it, like, oh, she did that. Why didn't they show her completely fall down? Oh, never mind. She's performing. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, I do enjoy that. I, I can always go with a, you know, a good, uh, good music performance, especially because she sang too. So that that's something that. Oh yeah. You you get people. I think it was uh, like Madonna a couple of years ago, and she lip synced. And the majority of the people, that's what they do. You get a select few that actually do uh, sing and play their own instruments and whatnot. So that was nice to see that. I thought it was badass when she was playing that, like, guitar and that guy was holding her mic while she sang. That was badass. Yeah, I want a guitar now. I want a guitar. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that part, too. That was so cool. So, okay. the other thing that everybody loves about the Super Bowl, whether it be... Watching the game, watching the halftime show, eating uh-huh. eating like a fatty, are the commercials Woo-hoo. and the ads, which, in my opinion, this year, they uh, they were kind of weak, man. I ain't going to lie. What do you think? Shall I only I? saw the first half, because after, after halftime, like, I had to go home and like get ready for bed because I had to work super early the next day. Um, so I only saw about half the ads. But yeah, there was nothing that really... Like struck me that the that was really good. I liked Justin Timberlake's "Bye Bye Bye" commercial. Oh, with uh, did with you see that one, Joe? Do you see that one? Yeah, that was that was yes, yeah, definitely. And that was a good one. And it's doing it, and I'm like, I know these words. <laughs> and then and then he just scrolls next to to JT, and I'm like. This is this is a good commercial. This is fantastic. So um, like it makes me want to go try that drink though, because I'm like, hmm. So I mean, it worked. <laughs> did you have any uh, any funny ones that stood out to you, Joe? Um. Well, two things. One, I mean, since we are hardcore geek, and you mentioned that it was pretty weak, I do agree that it definitely was Super Mario Brothers <laughs> two. Um. Ha ha. Hit hit. Um. But the, it, it's a couple of, it, if you really sit there and think about all the commercials they showed, they, it seems like they were more serious, which I'm fine with. I'm completely fine with. Okay. Um, I would say this year, last year was the first year where it seems like as the commercials aren't as important, they're trying to put more emphasis on the game. Because think about it, 10 years ago, Literally, after every play, it would cut to a commercial. Oh yeah, and it would show a commercial while they're huddled, huddled up and everything. Mm-hmm. So you you're getting like ten commercials within like a five minute period, just back to back to back. But nowadays, I think you know, possibly complain. You know, people complaining like, "Hey, I want to see the game," right. and it's just it just doesn't seem like the same emphasis on is on it. Like you you notice certain ones, but they don't they don't pop like they used to. Uh, the one that definitely stands out is the Cam Newton one. I was almost crying with that one. Mm-hmm. That was hilarious. That was nice, yeah. 
Yeah, I can, uh, can, can't go wrong with uh, watching little kids just get destroyed on, on a peewee football right. team. Um, right. <laughs> so I know some stuff that like we were looking forward to were the uh, the uh, the TV spots for some of our upcoming movies that are going to be coming out. Uh, we got a new one for Logan. We got a uh, full Pirates of the Caribbean trailer. Yo. We got uh, a Transformer extended trailer. And I think... I think that's it. Now, if I'm, am I missing one? There was a Guardians of the Galaxy one. Oh, the, right of off course, the bat. of course, the Guardians. I think the Guardians one leaked during the day, though. I don't. I I didn't see it. I didn't see it till the game started, and I shushed everyone in the room when the minute it came on because people were talking, and I was like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and they all looked at me like I was nuts. So we'll, we'll, let's start with that. I mean, the Guardians one, obviously, we this is one that we are obviously looking forward to. I can't wait. From everything to the, you know, the nice little quips and kind of introducing the new members of the team to, I mean, you, the star in this one, you all know it's going to be Baby Groot. Fuck yeah, it is! <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, Baby Groot is going to steal the spotlight on that. I am so excited. Definitely, or... Or it might be shared with him and uh, Rocket just because, you know, they're homies. So, I mean, <laughs> I think it'll probably be a tie with them. Rocket's like his dad. <laughs> yes. And the cool right. thing, Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I like the ending with uh, with Drax where... Uh, <laughs> where uh, was it, Man- is it Mantis or is it... I think it's Nebula. Has it been Nebula that got taken out? I think. And then he's just No, like, it's Mantis that got it, taken is out. Is it Mantis? Yeah. And he's just like... Look out! And then it's like ten seconds later. He's like, "It's like, well, I tried." You know, <laughs> it's like it, it shouldn't be funny, but it was funny, and it's just it's it's, good stuff. it's perfect for that movie. I think it the Guardians films they're they're a great, um, you know, they kind of get away from the ultra serious like, um, you know, Civil War, Civil War, and you know, a little bit of Doctor Strange and whatnot, and. You know they're they're just straight up fun. It's just they're they're an adventure. Um, I love Star Lord. You love Star Lord, um, man. I mean this uh, this is definitely going to be a we got to see this oh, when yeah. it comes out. Yeah. Um, anything from that trailer really stand out, Joe? Not specifically. Um, I was meaning to actually watch it again today, but I ended up watching Jessica Jones on watch. Um, I'm gonna check it out again and let you know. Because when I seen it, we were flicking, well, the remote control holder was flicking through channel. And then by the time he came back to it, it was already like halfway through. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And then I got the alert, Guardians trailer. I'm like, oh, come on. So I I keep forgetting to watch it and I need to watch that again. There we go. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, So a movie that I really wasn't hyped for that... There's two of these that I wasn't hyped for, that uh, that the trailers are starting to make me feel a little bit different, and that's uh, the new Transformers movie, The Last Night, and uh, the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. What is it called? Dead Man Tell No Tales? Is that Something what it like is? That. I don't remember. Do you guys see those? That, I did. That sounds close, yeah. I'm just going to be honest, I could give two shits about Transformers anymore. I didn't even make it halfway through the last one. It was the movie's a, like four fucking hours long. It was really long. I was bored 45 <laughs> minutes into it, and I shut it off. I didn't even get to the dinosaurs. I was really pissed. It's the only thing I wanted to see. Oh, you didn't miss much then. And I was like, fuck this. I'm not watching this. You hype for Transformers, or you could could you leave it, Joe? Oh, I'm hype, and I think it's because of this twist of what's going on with Optimus. So I think that's intriguing. I still, like we spoke, um, spoken in regards to other previous episodes, I need to see, uh, what, what is the last one called? The last Transformers? Uh, the last one that came out? Age of Extinction. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Long as shit. So I still need movie. to see that. It, and that, see, and that's the problem because, you know, if the wife falls asleep or something and it's like, you know, 10 ish, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna watch a movie or something. But I, I look at that and I'm like, man, this movie almost three hours. I'm not watching this. Thing. <laughs> exactly. So you got to make sure you got to make sure you have 
that allotted time so you can pay attention. Because I've caught bits and pieces of it, like on FX and stuff, and it yeah. looked okay for what I've seen. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go on it because I'm, I'm a big fan of the series. I'm going to go on and watch it one day, which it got to be soon because I want to see it before uh, the last night. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, the trailer definitely makes me uh, more intrigued. It's a little bit better. It's weird that, that uh, Anthony Hopkins is in it, so that's that's something. So they're they're definitely throwing some names in there. Well, maybe I'll give it a shot if there's Anthony Hopkins. As soon as Megan Fox comes back, maybe. Fuck that bitch! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that was a uh, shot fire, bang bang. <laughs> I know, right? I know. <laughs> She's mad because it's aggressive. <laughs> okay, this is there's this this ongoing war between Michelle and Megan Fox because she doesn't like Megan Fox's thumbs. I don't. Do you know this whole thing about her thumbs? She don't like her thumbs. She Have you seen her thumbs? She has fucking it's hard. toe thumbs. It's hard to stare at her thumbs when everything else is there. Now, now. In my defense, I'll throw this out here. Megan Fox is is beautiful. She is, understandably. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's one of those things where everybody goes in that direction. Ooh, Megan Fox. And I'll go in the opposite direction for somebody like uh, Anna Kendrick, who is freaking amazing. Yeah. And I think it's the humor that makes her so beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, Megan Fox just seems like this, la da 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 Look at my body. Don't look at my thumbs. You know, so... Please go Google it. Please. <laughs> please. I need you to Google it right now. Speaking of Anna Kendrick... Oh, it's going down as we speak. It's happening yes. right now. So, Anna Kendrick, and uh, I think this is per your recommendation, myself and my wife, we uh, we checked out Trolls last weekend, and uh, that movie was great. It was a fun, cute movie. I haven't seen it. I loved it. I'd probably watch it again. <laughs> hilarious All right, I'll have to there are so time. many things the more you watch it the more you'll notice it and yeah you need to watch it so we can all talk about it one night so I because I, I, I can't say something that I want to say right now or it'll, it'll definitely spoil the movie okay yeah. and I'll make sure I watch it yeah, really did, you, good. did you google those thumbs yet I'm doing it now Megan Fox has an imperfection uh oh she's yeah. got a toe thumb Whoa. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's not a fucking thumb. That's a toe. It is disgusting. I mean, she's got... She got There's a medical term for it. It's called brachydactyl. So she's a... She's a dinosaur? Yeah, she's right? a dinosaur? <laughs> she's got a fucking toe thumb is what she's got. Oh, man. Fancy word for a club thumb. She's a dinosaur. I'm cool. Hey, I, who doesn't love dinosaurs? Come on, you get, you got to be a terrible person to not love dinosaurs. So, I I think I win again when it comes to Megan Fox. Michelle, you lose. Um, speaking of Transformers, um, this whole twist with uh, Optimus Prime looking like he's going bad, he's going evil, he's going, he's going rogue. rogue. It's almost like the same plot of the new Fast and Furious, right? It does. Yeah. It does. It, and that, I think that I'm I'm a big person on Twitter. So I'm really, I was I was one of the many out there, I'm sure, who was pissed that they were making a Furious 8. And actually a 9 and 10 has already been confirmed. What? They already have released oh, it. I didn't know yeah, that. They, they've already been. Yeah, this this actually starts a whole new uh, trilogy, I guess we can say. But Let they all die. connect somehow. Yeah, I don't understand like seven and it's so perfect you could have like literally literally i'm gonna say it one more time right michelle literally left it at that mm-hmm. I, I haven't watched it's it. your money it, cow the ending gets me right in the feels wait wait, wait hold up time up time up you say you haven't watched seven i can't I you can. can you have to no i can't bring myself to watch there's nothing bad the that last happens. paul walker movie i can't I can't. I don't do think it. that's the last but one. There was another it's one. An act- it's actually one of the better. It's like in the top three furious to movies to me. The action, the story, it's hilarious, mm-hmm. and it it ends perfect. You it's it's, it's, it's exactly what it should do. Do you cry when you hear that song? Yes, the Mac- Macklemore song. Uh, 
or whatever his name is. The funny thing about it, when we were in the theater and um, at the end, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sap, I'm not going to lie. And it's this bigger guy next to me, and he was just bawling, just bawling. And I'm sitting here, and my lips shivering, and it was there. It was ready, like the tear duct was forming. <laughs> <laughs> it was ready, but it never fell. And I was like, I'd, I'd have been fine with it. Like, man, it's just, it was, it's good. And now that she has said that, Ryan, we all have to watch the movie together so we can be there with it. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Y'all can watch me cry. I'll watch it again. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, um, but I, the thing I love about the, the what it looks for, what it looks like in this new trailer, is at this point, Fast and Furious, they know what they are. They know that it's beyond ridiculous with wrecking balls, hitting cars, and all of a sudden the rocks driving a, a tank fifty miles an hour, yeah. and then at the end, and this is funny because this is I, I know this trailer came out a while ago, but it, I love watching it on Super Bowl Sunday um, when they're on the ice, and I'm like. Man, just watch a freaking submarine come out of there, and then a damn submarine comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no fucking way. And I'm like, I need to see this movie. This is, it's. And just... you're waiting. You're just waiting for somebody to be in the background, like. Uh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> I know the next one's gonna be in space. I'm telling you, it's they're gonna hijack a. a That's a, where number nine's going. It's, it's amazing. So I'm pumped to see that. Um, other trailers we got. Pirates looked pretty good. That was the other one I was kind of uh, kind of on the edge with. I know? was excited. I'm a little bit confused. I might have to watch it again because like there was so much happening. I don't really feel like I knew what was happening, but I saw Will as um Davy Jones, and I was uh, oh. You down with the uh, pirates? The new one. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I've only seen the first one, and it's one of those series that I keep saying I'm going to make a marathon of it, or I'm going to watch this, and I never do, and then another freaking movie comes out. <laughs> it's been like three so, years. I know, I know, and that's what happens. I mean, I, I can add other movies to that list that I'm not going to name because I'll end up getting cursed out. But it's, it's, it's a few series that I keep saying I'm going to watch. Cough, cough, Harry Potter. I was going to say it's Harry Potter, the isn't one. it? Sorry, whoa. <laughs> this, is, this is turning into a debate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really start. That's what you get. You almost killed me. That's what you get. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Have you seen Harry Potter? Like, not one? Love you. Like, not one. We're, we're talking about Harry Potter, right? Yes. I've seen the first one like maybe 20 minutes on NBC Family, aka Freeform. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I can't do it anymore. I feel your pain because, and this, this might come, you know, being on the Hardcore Geek podcast, I'm probably one of the few people I don't want to see it, and I've never seen any of them. The Lord of the Rings movies. I'm so sorry. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> She's out. I gotta go. <laughs> you. I've never seen them either, so don't feel bad. Right? I'm a sci-fi guy. I'm, <gasps> a, I'm, a, I'm not a fantasy guy. I'm a sci-fi guy. I'm. I need lasers and and people flying ships and stuff, and maybe like a half naked, like uh, like naked uh, alien woman that's maybe green or blue, but you can still tell like what's going on down there. <laughs> Boobs and stuff. Yeah, three boobs. Yeah. Exactly. I don't need to see like. Um, I don't need to see a talking ass tree. <laughs> when I can... have you ever seen? Uh, have you ever seen Clerks Two? Yes. Okay. See, Rando explained what happened in all three movies, but I feel like I've seen them. They they did a lot of walking. <laughs> <laughs> if you could see the look on Peace's face right now, like. She's clenching her I fist. I mean, correct, correct, me if, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle. It, 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 that, that's what the movie is, right? A lot, a lot of walking and more walking? Cool. No. Yeah, this could have just been she, one movie. <laughs> it no, could have. No. No. <laughs> We're pissing a lot of people off right now, but it's okay. No. Okay. I mean, they're, they're like four hours apiece. 
Um, I think it might be. Just, just think, think about that, because I'm pretty sure I just said that being funny, too, because six times three is 18. Wait. That's actually <laughs> hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> And yeah, no offense to our Lord of the Rings fans, you know, like obviously Mich- Michelle, she loves them. Um, that's just not my cup of tea. Oh team. no, they definitely oh, must have did. They no. did something right. Oh heck yeah, absolutely. I'm proud of them. They did something right, and definitely. They, and then they did I a just, prequel, prequel trilogy, right? Or prequel? Right. Yeah. So I mean, can't, they they did. Yeah, like you said, they did something right there. So I can't really complain about that. Again, not not really my cup you know, of tea. Ryan? What's up? You know what we should do, Ryan? We do a marathon? We should, okay. We, we, yeah, we should do. Well, it it got to be like separate days because, I mean, if she's talking about the director's cut with all three of them, it's like, you know, 45 hours. So, then, I mean, I got four <laughs> bedrooms. Y'all can sleep over, so. So, yeah, the Fellowship of the Ring in itself is three hours and 48 minutes. So, yeah, 18 hours. Yeah. Holy shite. Do we need to watch the director's cut? Like, yes. will I miss out on yes. something? Yes. Yes. Okay. How, so, how about how about how about I watch the USA version minus the commercial? I have I have them on DVD. I have the director's cut. And you know what? The movies are so long that you put that they are on two discs each. Wow! So like Titanic, because you remember yeah, you had to take the yeah. It, it stopped and it said, "Please insert tape two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man! How much? I wonder how long the director's cuts are on VHS. Like, how many VHS tapes is that going to take? <laughs> Four. <laughs> like, like, you roll in there, like, with a cart full of tapes looking like an asshole. Those movies are so good. That's crazy. I, okay. I so, will, okay. I'll we, do, yeah. What I'll we got to do, Ryan, we got to come to agreement with her. You know, we, so, if we, and then we have to report it back on the podcast. We, so. we can do it live. We could do like <laughs> like Mystery Science Three Thousand. We can do like we could do a commentary on it. I'm totally fine. No clueless commentary with with Joe and Ryan as Michelle no. gets angry. I don't, I don't know. She. I don't think she'll like that. I feel like I can picture her face right now. Like you're yeah. not. Yeah, you about pictured it. Right. You pictured it right. Oh, man, I like. I'm gonna look like fucking Gandalf by the time these things are all over. These are like my favorite movies. I mean, seriously. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like my heart hurts right now. First, Joe hasn't seen Harry Potter. I've now I'm finding that y'all haven't watched Lord of the Rings, and my heart hurts. I know about the the talking trees and in Frodo and yes. or Yolo. No, Frodo and Sam. Frollo. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll, we'll 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 uh, we'll segue this. Okay, so anyways. Uh, okay, let's do let's let's do this then. Let's okay. If you watch Furious Seven with us, okay. the director's we will watch cut, if there is the first, one. <laughs> right. <laughs> we will watch the first Lord of the Rings before director's cut. Okay. And if we honestly like it, okay. we will continue the series. Okay. I'm gonna up the ante is after the end of Furious Seven. I'm going to get my karaoke app, and we're going to be like, it's been a long day. And we're going to do that together. That's it. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do I'm, that. I'm down with that. I mean, you know, if you need background, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about karaoke. We should totally do that. Okay. We got to go to karaoke again. We will. Okay. We will totally do this. Okay. All right. I'm down. I'm down with that. Well, okay. I'll, I'll totally yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, one movie apiece. Okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, Joe, you sent me a very interesting text this week that you were reading an article uh, put out by IGN uh, regarding the top 100 video games of all time. Now, I just pulled up the list on, on uh, my computer here, and I'm kind of just scrolling a little bit through. Um, you said there was some discrepancies on this list. Now... It's a long ass list. I didn't go through all of them, but um, like, how did you come across this list? What do you agree with? Uh, well, well, at work, uh, IGN is one of my uh, bookmarks, and I usually go to it daily or at least every other day just okay. to see the top stuff. And it was one of the top five stories, and 
I'm all for top 100 games of all time, you know, as an avid uh, old school gamer and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I always want to know, it's not even so much as the order, even though that does piss me off. It's about what's on there and what's above what, because that's the crucial part of it. It's, it's you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's even tough for me to say, you know, example, Legend of Zelda is one of my all-time favorite games as a theory. Yeah. And it's hard for me to put in order which ones I like. I almost have to just group them together because they're phenomenal games. Each one up to any for the other one. But if you didn't have the one before it, you wouldn't have the one after it. So that's kind of how I look at that situation. By the way, Megan Fox Thun is still staring me in the damn face. What is you gotta, going on? You got to close that tab. Close the tab. <laughs> I just did. I just did. I forgot it was there. Well, I'm seeing Thank like you, Michelle, for that. Like I'm okay. I, I'm I'm scrolling rapidly through this, and I'm looking. And this is not to piss anybody off, but I, I see Gran Turismo Three is rated higher than Mega Man Mega Man Three. What? And higher Mega than Man Contra. Two. Mega Man Two and Contra. Like w- what? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I was pissed about that. It's a- and as you're looking at that, Contra is number 84, I think. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and uh, GoldenEye is ranked one below Burnout 3 and and freaking whatever Monkey Island 2 is. Like, that, that, that makes no... I don't know. And I'm sure all these... This is all subjective, you know? Well, does it have, like, at the top, like, what they use to rank these or anything like that? Like, does it explain how or why they ranked them this way? Oh, it's the actual, see what I did, um, to bring up how I brought it up, I just, I put in top 100 games IGN, and the first thing that comes up is a Reddit page where, uh, one of their users actually put it just in numerical order, because if you go to IGN's website, you have to scroll through all of the That's what I'm on. Stuff. Yeah. Okay, and they give, you know, they give you descriptions, you can read each one I did, I just read certain ones to see what they said about it, but they said they use specific criteria from their core, uh, their core staff. And you can click here to see that that's actually all the way at the bottom before you get to the comments. I didn't even click it because I was so furious at certain key things, which one of them you mentioned, uh, golden eye being number 66 out of a hundred. That's, Bananas. I'm sorry, Golden Eye is one of the greatest games of all time. Well, that game is amazing. In the top 20. Does this make me a bad that. gamer if I don't know like a good amount of these? Like I'm sure a lot of these are like I'm not a PC gamer, I'm a console gamer, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. Um I th- I won't consider you a bad gamer because I mean, to be honest with you, I can easily name like twenty maybe 40 that I've never played before. I've heard of them and that might have helped from, you know, having a Game Informer subscription or even my uh, two and a half years working at GameStop, you know, yeah. just knowing of the games. So a lot of them I haven't played either, but, you know, when you look at, when you look at a top 100 or just in general a top list of greatest video games, and, you know, our generation, you know, the NES, SNES, Genesis, Nintendo 64 generation, you know, we're looking for stuff that definitely should be on there from that gen- from that generation. Mm-hmm. So when I'm when I'm scrolling and they typically, of course, start at the top at 100 because that makes sense, you know, build the, sus- build the suspense of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm rapidly I'll just, scrolling to I'll the name bottom. A- Rock right. And I'll, I'll name a. Yeah, I was very pissed about that. I understand why it's on there because it redefined um, gaming, but you have that on there, but not Guitar Hero 3. And Guitar Hero 3 is arguably, or Guitar Hero World Tour, is arguably the best out of any of those guitar games, period. Like that, it has the best set list. Um, They could have Rock Band on there probably because of their massive uh, downloadable content, so many you know songs that you can download, so it's like nearly endless. But I just feel like if you're gonna have that on there, Guitar Hero should be on there too. But mm-hmm. they should. I mean, come on, you got Rock Band number thirty-two, 
but you got Mike Tyson's Punch Out eighty six. Exactly. You got Final Fantasy seven eighty. Like I've never, you know, I'm one of few, I'm sure, who never played Final Fantasy seven. Um, and that's because I'm I'm not a turn based RPG guy. I like I like real time so I'm, I like Zelda, I like Fable when Fable was out and everything. But I can respect it. And everybody, you know, it got game of the year and they're redoing it for the PlayStation 4 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You know, they're they're um, updating it and everything. So for that to be eighty, you know, it is just it's just I don't I don't understand it. So yeah, that being thirty two to me that should be like ninety something. Mm-hmm. You know, it should be on the list, but it shouldn't be that low at all. Yeah. I uh I fast forwarded. I, I went to the top ten here, and um, some I agree with that are within that top ten, but some I, I strongly disagree with. And, okay, so let's start with what do you disagree with? Uh, and this is probably just because I'm I, I've never played the Portal series. Uh, Portal at number Portal Two at number five. Um, I, I've seen I the game. I can understand that. Yeah, I mean, it, the gameplay looks fun. Ocarina of Time, within the top ten, I, I, I'll give it that. Like, that's... That's a good game. Besides the original Zelda and Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, like, that was our jam. Like, that was... Like, we all broke the 64. Like, you know, for overheating with playing that <laughs> thing so much. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I had to go cartridge and everything. It, mm. it got no better yeah. than that. Super Metroid, uh, I, I do like that. I mean, I think that... Uh, I I did like Super Metroid over r- original Metroid, and I think just because the the graphics compared to the 8-bit, uh, you know, the 16 to the 8-bit from uh, Super Nintendo, uh, it was really good, and the... The music, I remember just the music of Super Metroid used to, it kind of creep you out a little bit, you know, as a kid. Oh, it definitely, it definitely puts you in the game. I personally, Super Metroid would be in the top five, probably number three, because I'm um, not sure if y'all know, but they, they do these lists pretty much almost every year or every few years. Uh-huh. And it was a time where Super Metroid actually was number one for the longest. And I always agreed because that was one of the first really overly difficult games that I actually Mm -hmm. beat. And you would have thought I got like my bachelor's degree or something. (laughs) Like I walked out the house proud that day. It was like, man, where you been? Playing Super Metroid. Yeah, I beat it. (laughs) <laughs> that was an accomplishment back then. I got you. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's no save. There was no upload it to YouTube and show everybody. You gotta take somebody at their word or let have somebody watch you do it. So, um, what do y'all feel about Tetris at number ten? Tetris, it's a classic. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I agree say- with that. I think for what it is, it should definitely be in the top ten mm-hmm. or at least top twenty. I should hours. say. I could play that game for hours. We used to do drinking games to Tetris, so I do remember that. Um, but but while with you mentioning Tetris, I guess I can only say the, the only slight issue I have is, you know, Tetris, you think of Tetris, you think of Pac-Man too, because they, you know, same era, kind of. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and this Pac-Man is number 53. Yeah, I saw that's not, that. Yeah, that's not right. Let me go to the 20s here and see where we're at here. So, Street Fighter 2, number 20. But Minecraft is number 15? Minecraft is a terrible oh, game. I mean, I know a lot of people right, who, I... who enjoy it, but... It's not, I don't know, man. It's uh, Chrono Trigger. I do remember Chrono Trigger as a kid at number 13. I agree with that because that definitely uh, changed a lot of aspect for RPGs too. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm cool with that. But then you have that, and where is? But then you have Earthbound number seventy five, which arguably a lot of people say is one of their favorite games of all time too. Yeah, yeah. But then you have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. You know what their favorites are. Um, 
I think whenever you do a top 10 or a top 50, top 100, you're bound to piss a lot of people off Mm -hmm. regardless. You know, whether Mm -hmm. it's video games, top 10 musicians, uh, actors, movies, whatever, right? Um, you're, You're going to piss somebody off because everybody has different... Uh, memories. Right. Everybody is very protective of their childhood, as as are we. And um, you know, we're we're looking at oh man, how was Punch Out way behind? You know, Final Fantasy Seven. You know, I mean, I know you're the same, Joe, and I'm the same, and I'm sure Michelle. If you put you know Final Fantasy Seven on one TV, and you got an old school Nintendo, and you got friggin' you know. Punch Out or Contra or anything like that or a regular Metroid, I'm gonna go play the old school stuff. Yeah, because that's just what I was brought up on. Like I'll play Paperboy before I'll play Fallout. You know, right? I agree, definitely. It like uh, new gaming. I can I I dig it. I can get into it to a certain extent, but just the old it's. It's the chip tune. It's the old music. Speaking you know, of, that's that's why that's um, our theme music. Is as we have, you know, that chip tune right. music. That's what we are. There are four noticeable games that are missing. Okay, yeah, and we're on those one down. of them. One of them, I'm a name. You're gonna look at this list again and not believe me, but uh, I'll start with that. There is not a single Sonic the Hedgehog game on this list. What? I did notice that. Yeah. No Sonic, which is terrible. Because no, I, I played Sonic no. hours. I fucking love Sonic. And the, the thing about it, any Sonic 1, 2, 3, or Sonic and Knuckles could have been on here. Arguably, it would have probably either been... Um, I mean, it, it can go any way because I liked one, but it... But then two up the end on the one. Like I can, I can actually sit here play two like it's nothing and just go through that whole game within an hour and a half. Just go, just blow through it. So and then you know, of course, three introduced the knuckles and then Sonic and knuckles. So I, I was a little disappointed with that. I'm like, you have every Super Mario on here, and Sonic did the exact same thing Super Mario did for NES what they did for Genesis so and that was the number one thing I noticed I had to look at the list like several times to make sure I wasn't sure um not sure if y'all ever was a fan of this but uh Super Ghost and Goblins for the Super Nintendo yeah oh. that's not on here which arguably is that's actually one of my favorite Super Nintendo games along with Contra 3 they put the first Contra on there, I'm fine with it, but to me, Contra 3 Alien Wars was better because it, you know, you come out, a lot of times you come out with a sequel, it improves on what they already did right. Mm-hmm. At least from that standpoint on Contra. Um, Another one. Grand Theft Auto 3 isn't on there. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Because uh, you brought up uh, uh, Super Cools of Goblets, or uh, it's like, the one thing that I noticed too is there's not one Castlevania game on here. Yeah, there is. There was. There's well, one. It actually is number twenty-seven. Oh, did I miss it? Oh. Yeah, it's, it wasn't the original. I saw it, and I I noticed that the original wasn't on there. Oh, yeah, it's right Symphony there. and Night. Okay, I'm the, talking about old school, like the original Simon Belmont. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. I don't know. And that and that goes back to what you were saying too. You know it. I'm sure it's. I'm sure if they had a list of like uh, honorable mentions, it possibly could be on there. But if you have, I mean, not okay. Not every game can be like Mario. I mean, pretty much every Mario is solid. You know what I mean? So it's hard to X one of those out. Is just about where do you put them at on the actual top 100? So from a Castlevania standpoint. And I've never played Symphony of the Night, but I've always heard that that was, you know, top five PlayStation games, arguably, you know, one of the greatest games on the list, which is the reason that it made it in the top three. Yeah, so, you know. Yeah, we're looking at, yeah. I'm glad to see, uh, we, we just scroll past it, we got uh, Super Smash Brothers, at least one of the entries on there. Can't, you can't go wrong with that. Right, I agree. Those. What are the other ones that yeah, that's, are... That's hours of fun. 
Love it. Oh, hell yeah. What What are the other ones that uh that surprised you that weren't on the list? Was there a Tekken game on there? Tekken is not on there. Okay, maybe I'm biased, but I love Tekken. Um, I'm down with Tekken. I like Tekken. Were you a Tekken fan, Ryan? Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. I wasn't, but as my my baby brother, it's, we're 12 years apart, right? And, um, okay. oops, yeah, I'm just knocking shit over in the office here. Uh, we had, do you remember, like, with the old PlayStations, uh, you can go, and I think you can go to, like, you can go to, like, Taco Bell, and you can go to, like, Pizza Hut, and they'd have, like, the sample discs, and they have, like, yeah, five or six demos yeah. on there. You know what I'm talking about? You get to play one person and yeah. you get pissed off because it's over now. Yeah. So, like, my brother was, like, old enough to start, like, um, oh, look at this. We got somebody chiming in. Bam. We have a chatter. So we have a chatter. Um, okay, so we were we were playing the, um, the Tekken, I think it was probably Tekken 1, and my brother was, like, just old enough to start, you know, getting into gaming. And he loved the tank of games. And, like, as a result, you know, we would buy them and we would play it. He'd whoop my ass, you know. And, um, but, like, I'll tell you what. My dudes were Eddie Gordo and King and Yoshimitsu. I whoop, and I, I'd still get my ass whooped, but those are my guys. I loved being the panda. I was oh, always the panda. <laughs> That sounds like that sounds like something you would definitely pick. <laughs> definitely. My sister would always play this one guy, and uh, I don't remember. I don't even remember which one we had, but uh, you would go through the solo mode, um, and like you would pick up different like food and stuff to like bring your power back up. And whenever he would pick up the thing, he would go, "Mmm, chicken." And it was the funniest thing. I would laugh hysterically as a child because I thought it was the best thing ever. But me and my sister would play this game for hours. It was the best. Do you, um... Did we see... Were there any Mortal Kombat games on there? There is not a single Mortal Kombat game on there. Um, you gotta have it, at least one. It looks like... It looks like the only fighting game from what I can see is Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2. Um, yeah, 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 I did, uh... I don't know. I mean, we talked a couple of weeks ago, you know, our love for Street Fighter. So, I mean, I, I'm happy that that made it on there. I didn't like Street Fighter. What? Was it too much? Just... I mean, I guess, I guess if you, if you think about, um, it's still, okay, think about fighting games as a whole, y'all. And for a lot of people, the replay, replayability is low just because, like, okay, example for me, when I was younger, you know, Street Fighter is what I was introduced to. That's, you know, that's probably our first fighting game, technically. Yeah. And, you know, then you have Mortal Kombat and everything. So, while I think Mortal Kombat should be on there, because to me, that's where it introduced blood into the game. It introduced gore. It was the first thing for fatalities and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it, it definitely sparked, it sparked, it put a spark uh, under a lot of developers to start creating, you know, um, knockoffs and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So that probably should be on there, but I think it, it could be an honorable, honorable mention. You know, it's so many games that should have made the list. Yeah. Well, and this- it's just tough, you know, just like P saying she likes uh, Tekken. I... I've never been a big Tekken fan. Um, it seems to, uh, it's always seemed too slow for me. I like Soul Calibur. I was a big Soul Calibur fan. So the more, you know, just like Street Fighter, the more it was easier to do combos and stuff. And then you also have, I mean, you would think something like Marvel versus Capcom would be on here if that's the case. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I guess. And I think the only reason I'm like kind of like wondering why. Mortal Kombat isn't on there because correct me if I'm wrong was this the game that led to us getting uh, ratings for our games um that's a good question that's a that's a very good question I know the ESRB has been around for a long time so let's uh, let's check that check the Google check the definitely Google. check that I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that one yeah um, but uh, to answer your, 
to answer your question uh, real quick, the what should have been on there that I was confused. Uh, so we already said Sonic. We said Super Ghost and Goblins. The other two, in my opinion, uh, should have been Grand Theft Auto 3. Mm-hmm. They had Life City on there and they had 5 on there. But 3 was the first one that it changed everything. You know, that arguably is like the first open world game where you can pretty much do anything. So I thought yes. you should pay homage to that. I and learned. that should be on there. Yes, that game taught me that if you find a hooker, bang her, not only will you get healthy, but you can kill her and take your money back. <laughs> taught me a valuable you life think? lesson. Right. Absolutely. And then the other one, uh, which is just one of my personal favorites, uh, Ninja Gaiden for Xbox. Um, one of the most difficult games I've ever played. Uh, if you go back and read any reviews on it back in the day, uh, shout out Rest in Peace Game Pro magazines, one of my favorites. Uh, they rated it high, and then other ones rated it low just because it was so difficult. It was pissing people off because they just couldn't get past things. And I'm like, it intrigued me because yeah. I spent weeks on certain boards, and then when I finally beat it, like I said, I felt that accomplishment. Like, you know, I had my head held high. And I had a magical WWE championship belt out of nowhere if you're on my shoulder, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told you. So those are, the, those are the ones I would say that uh, definitely I don't understand why they weren't on there, but, yeah. yeah. And again, it's everything's going to be subjective. You know, there's going to be things that are left off, especially in the world of video games where, I mean, 100 is not enough no. to hold everything because you have so many different genres and uh, you have different franchises within those genres and uh, man you know it's a uh, it's hard to really narrow it down to a hundred so you know I gotta give it to IGN for doing what they can um, however you're not gonna please anybody really I do agree with the number one well duh I mean I love Mario but for me personally, Mario Three is what blew my freaking mind. Um, especially the way it was introduced in the Wizard, you know. Right. So I mean, so you agree? So you agree with Mario Three being number one? I agree with that one. Like I would. Here's the thing, and that, and I base it off of this. Like when we got the announcement for the Nintendo Classic, the one game I wanted to make sure that was on there was Mario 3. And if Mario 3 wasn't on there, it was a deal breaker. You know? I can understand that. I probably, I'm probably one of the only people who, as much as I love Mario 3, I have to say that I actually like Super Mario World more. Super Mario, okay, for SNES. Yes. Okay. That game, to me, right there, just... I mean, I love Mario 3. It definitely is a classic. I love it to death. But that Super Mario world is just... To me, it blows it out the water. You know, the it kind of an open world, I guess you can say, because you can go different places. I mean, you could do that on Mario 3, too, technically. But mm-hmm. just how they had the map. And then you would go back to this to do that and then it introduced uh, Star World and it had Tubular and uh, Rad and all those other uh, Star World boards and everything so I even Super Mario 64 is a close one that I would put over 3 because you know that's the first 3D Mario it is yeah and And it was it's just epic I can always go back to that and you know so yeah so I I give it to him for putting it number one. Um, I mean, it's you can flip between Mario 3, uh, Link to a Past, in my opinion, personal opinion, Super Metroid. You know, you can, you can flip between those, even Ocarina of Time, for being number one. So, gotcha. I don't see an issue with it. My favorite part of Super Mario 3 was the fact that I got to be a raccoon and a frog and all those fun suits. But, 
That's like, right. I'll never forget when someone was like, you know you can do a run and start and hit the button and you can fly in the raccoon suit. And I was like, what? Like, mind blown as a child. That's right. <laughs> it was just the best thing for me. So I will didn't say... Take, uh, didn't take much for us back then. I know. I know yeah. I, I will say that uh, Super Mario 1, uh, the you know, very first one, obviously... Um, holds a special place in my heart, obviously, because it's Duck the Hunt. first one. Yeah, of course, it was paired with Duck Hunt, but, uh, <laughs> in, fuck that dog. I'm, they should make a stupid dog. You know you could shoot that dog, right? No, you. I try it all the time. Oh, yeah, you could shoot the dog. Bastard. <laughs> um, but we would, when we would, uh, have band practice, we would, uh, we had an excellent drinking game with the original Mario, and, um, resulted in, um, some very rough nights where uh <laughs> I bet. you know if you do something stupid and you get killed by a goomba or if you fall down a hole or if you get eaten by you know like a, a you know a tunnel tunnel plant dude you gotta take a shot you know um if you get the star for as long as you're invincible everybody else in the room has to waterfall you know so it turned into a pretty interesting night just playing super mario so um i carried mario from my childhood into my adulthood and almost in the alcoholism, so <laughs> so uh, Mario uh, Mario has a special place in my heart. Right. And they made a movie. That's and didn't Super Mario three introduce us to Yoshi? That was when we first got Yoshi, right? Did we get Mario three and Yoshi? I thought no. No, Did that we get Yoshi before he that? was no. He was in Super Mario World. That that's what makes me think of Super Mario World was Yoshi. Because I'm like, oh, you can. That, that's that's the first time because you go back and get on the I don't remember each board I can just go to get them and then go out over the board just to go to heaven <laughs> mm-hmm. that's what I liked about it like yeah yeah you can't go wrong with Yoshi <laughs> I love Yoshi and oh, then uh, we had the spinoffs too yep the uh, Super Mario uh, World 2 Yoshi's Island they actually just came out with a new one for uh, 3DS some Yoshi's World game okay. is it the yarn one Yes, yes it is. I want to play that. I haven't played it yet. I might have to check it out and see if I can get a demo or something. My 3DS is collecting dust, so I think I need to use it. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Use it for what it is. Um, to answer your question, Ryan, you are absolutely right. Mortal Kombat is one of the reasons for them to form uh, a rating system along with a night trap because it has sexually suggested... Uh, themes in it. Nitro. The name sounds familiar. I'm not 100% hip to the game, so I probably have to look it up on YouTube. Is that the one where they, yeah, uh, never... it was like a, like a video and then like they, people were getting killed off at like a sleepover or something? Uh, something to that, yes. Definitely. Okay. And, uh, it came out for the Sega uh, Mega CD. came out uh, October 15, 92. Okay. And they ported it to the 32X and the 3DO, and as well as the computer. I know exactly what you're talking about now. Okay, I think we had that because we had so a Sega yeah. CD. So I've never, I've always seen the the cover art, which I'm looking at now, but um, never played it at all. Yeah, yeah, it was a. Uh, I've never played it, but uh, you know, as a, as an adolescent, you're like, huh. Am I going to see something on this game that I'm not <laughs> supposed to see? Of course, you right. know, Looking for, look for that side boob. <laughs> <laughs> that epic pixelated side boob. That's all we needed. <laughs> that's all we needed as kids. Right. I mean, I don't know about Michelle, but that's all I needed. I mean, that's all I needed. I was fine with it. You heard it here first. Michelle is all about the pixelated side boob. Yep. All right. Right. Is, it, is, it, is that a nipple? No, that's, 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 pic, that's pixelization. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh man well i'll tell you what we can we could spend all night and all day talking about this but uh we are going to want to wrap it up soon put a nice bow on this episode uh as far as the the list are you get uh start with joe you giving it a thumbs up or a thumbs down i'm gonna have to give it a thumb sideways is that an option <laughs> okay Thumbs sideways. Michelle, thumbs up, thumbs down for IGN's top 100 video games. Um, can, 
I mean, I guess we don't have to be politically correct. We're. I mean, no. We like, can we can hurt people's I'm, feelings. I'm a thumb sided too. Like I, I agree with some of it, but like there were there were childhood favorites on there that of mine that weren't on there. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of no on this. Like no. Okay. Well, myself, um, as much as I, I I enjoyed some of the the picks, and as much as I uh, agree with the number one. I got to give it a thumbs down. And uh, the reason for that is what Joe said. There's no Sonic on there. There's no Mortal Kombat on there. Nope. There's too many racing games. And um, I didn't see Madden on there either, which was, I mean... Every- yeah, you would think that they would actually put that on there or something it's to that so nature, but amazing. they didn't. So, unfortunately... Uh, you know, not like we're losing a sponsor or anything, but I gotta, I gotta give it a thumbs down. So that's it. But re- you know, regardless, as we said before, this is all subjective. It is what it is. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna hate it. Um, but uh, I'm but sure. yeah. But if you love us, you will uh, definitely check us out every single week right here on the Stolen Show Network. Like that segue, and uh, we're on a uh, www.hardcoregeekcast.com. Uh, you can check out all of our past episodes on iTunes and anywhere else you can find your favorite podcast. Type in the words Hardcore Geek and it'll probably autocomplete. You'll see us right there and our smiling faces. Uh, Joe, anything you want to plug? Anything else you want to talk about before we uh, we wrap the show up? No, I think I think we, we, we've talked a lot. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, I understand that, man. And uh, Michelle's dancing over there. So, Michelle, do you want... What What are you doing? I'm just dancing to the music in my head. Oh, my God. We need to take... Okay. You sure she don't have to go potty? Is that what it is? I she, what I got kids. Like, no, I'm say potty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she's doing. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we go? <laughs> I'm good. All right, we're good. Megan Fox's ugly thumbs. <laughs> oh, you get... get oh, out. come on. Now I'm going to have nightmares about it. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. All right. Okay. All right, well, guys, we will see you next week. Um, Be sure to uh, check out our sister show, Rebellion Wrestling Radio, this Friday night uh, on RebellionWrestling.com, also right here on the Stolen Show Network. Uh, For myself, for Joe, for Michelle, I want to say thank you for listening, downloading, and chatting with us. We will see you next week. Later. Bye. Bye.